call our regular, regular Board of Education meeting to order. If we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next, our mission statement, Chris. At Richmond Community Schools, we provide a quality education that empowers students to be successful in a global community. I'll go ahead and do roll call. Uh, Dan? Here. Jeff Toit? Is he absent with notice? Tracy? Here. Sarah? Here. Kyle? Here. Margaret? Here. I am here. We have a quorum. Okay, moving on. Approval of the agenda. Um, item number eight, we're going to cross off. Um, that was just a mis miscommunication between Brian and I because Haley is not here this evening, so we'll renumber. Um, then going down to what is um, now 11Z, uh, 11AA, I'd like to add a quick closed session for negotiations, and then the remaining items will become B, B, C, C, and D, D. So a motion would be in order to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. It's been moved and supported. Any dis discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is approval of the consent agenda. Motion would be in order. So moved. Second. Okay. It has been moved and supported. Brian? We have uh, quite a few people that are, will be joining our staff that are here tonight. I'd like to introduce them to you. Um, the first person is Amanda Evans. She will be doing, no, I'm sorry, Amanda's not here. Um, well, tell she, us about well, her. Amanda Evans, I will absolutely tell you. Uh, she has an associate's degree in early childhood. Uh, she comes um, as a lead caregiver um, in another district. Uh, she'll be taking over the three-year-old AM course and then Title I in the afternoon. Um, our preschool program is up in numbers. We've had, had two sections, an AM preschool three-year-old and an AM four-year-old program, so it's a good sign, um, the quality work that's going on there. So Amanda will be joining our team. Um, our elementary Spanish teacher is Ashley Evard. Ashley's back there. Ashley, um, Stand up. Ashley, Ashley comes with an extensive knowledge base, experiences. Um, she's been overseas um, as an au pair, and uh, we are excited to have her as uh, our addition to the elementary Spanish program. So, Ashley. Excellent. Welcome. Excited to have you. Welcome. Ashley's also an, an ESL teacher, or was an ESL teacher in Utica as, as part of her job. So she's worked with adults too. So. Very good. Um, the next person is Lindsay McCoy. Our kindergarten num kindergarten numbers are up, um, so we need are in the process of adding a, another section. Uh, Lindsay was our former Great Start Readiness full day teacher. She has a wealth of experience with early childhood and and. Our, our hope is that building that bridge between the preschool and the kindergarten it starts um, formally now with uh, some connections with the preschool program. So, Lindsay McCoy. Good to have you moving up to kindergarten. Excellent. Well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Our other kindergarten teacher uh, is Jessica Mitkowski. Kosky. I knew I was going to do that too. Um, Jessica has been was a long-term sub for us last year, and she did a phenomenal job in fifth grade. Um, her personality is very dynamic for what we're looking for in kindergarten, as well as her experience. So, welcome, Jessica. Uh, we have Trudy Rapier. All right, Trudy will be doing um, uh, our three-year-old preschool in the morning 
our four-year-old preschool three days a week in the afternoon and on Tuesdays and Thursdays we adjusted the title one staff rather than a portion of their day identifying with accelerated students that we did previously on Tuesdays and Thursdays that will be her focus in at the elementary schools to work with our high-end kids at kindergarten through fourth grade um, so I'm introducing Trudy Oh, and it's so good to have you, too. And our English teacher, Joseph uh, O'Gilvery, uh, had a conflict of interest tonight, but um, he's, uh, Ms. Michonne and I went through the interviews last week. Phenomenal guy. He's top-notch. Um, we really look forward to him joining the high school staff. So Joseph will be the other one. Awesome. And then finally, we have Nicole Spratke, who is an existing employee. She's moving positions somewhat. Um, she was previously our GSRP PM it's not an aide it's a um, associate teacher um, she will be the four-year-old AM preschool and then still remain as the associate teacher in that PM preschool program so we look forward to Nicole expanding her uh, opportunities here As far as staff, we have one more position to fill, and I'll be doing a final interview tomorrow, um, and then all of our staff will be in place for the 2016-17 school year. That's excellent. Great. Thank you. And welcome. Welcome, and congratulations moving up and all that kind of stuff. We're very excited to have you guys with us. Okay. It has been moved and supported. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, it's our true blue moment. Um, this is a portion of our meeting where we acknowledge uh, great things that happen in our school district, whether it's staff related, student related, what have you. And this evening, we um, are honoring two of our teachers who retired in June, and they are Marlene Coosdale and Mary McGowan. And um, from what I understand, uh, and I, I know Marlene pretty well, um, but from what I understand, this showcase of having to be um, acknowledged and made a big deal of was not something either one of them were interested in doing. Um, so they are not here this evening, but um, we believe that the work that they did at the elementary school for all the years that they were here and what they did for our students and got our students to um, become better students and better children um, we're going to acknowledge them and honor them anyways uh, so uh, mr. Walmsley is going to start uh, first mrs. McGowan um, she was a this past year she was a kindergarten teacher in at Lee um, though I've only known her for two years um, she is one that is um, hardworking and dedicated she taught for the district over 11 years um, previously, she taught in uh, Gross Point schools for 18 years, as well as St. A's. Miss um, um, McGowan and I have a common friend together, which is uh, we actually got to know each a little more. But I can honestly say, when I walk in the classroom, she's there's always a smile on her face. Um, I don't think anything got her down or struggled. She may have been stressed, uh, she may have been um, overwhelmed, but she never portrayed it uh, to the kids and the staff, which. Um, I appreciate because this teaching is not an easy job. It's very difficult. Um, so I want to thank her for her years of service to Richmond Community Schools. Um, Marlene Coosdale uh, was another retiree that this past June. Uh, she taught 30, third grade, excuse me. Um, she was hired in 1996, so for 20 years she's been there. Um, Marlene is another one that um, went goes with the flow. If things changed and adjusted, she adjusted um, to meet her, her style and her needs for the students in her classroom. Um, I did have an opportunity about a year and a half ago when we, I was intern principal at Lee to sit in on a parent-teacher conference and one of the things I can say that was very impressive about Mrs. Coosdale was her, her calm demeanor with parents in giving some difficult news and she knew right where her student was at 
And so from a parent perspective, as a superintendent perspective, I think that put a lot of at ease with some of the, the concerns that were addressed. So that speaks volumes to her as an individual of wanting to make sure that she uh, provides the best for her students. So I wish both of them happy retirement uh, and all the best in the years to come. Absolutely, and on behalf of the board, we um, were very honored to be able to have them as teachers here in the district and grateful for all that they did. And we wish them um, a very good retirement and a long, healthy retirement. So thank you to both of them and we wish them well. Okay, next is superintendent and legislative report update. Uh, I'm going to start off with at the state level and work down because um, I want to end on a positive note because we have a great school year getting ready to start. Um, I would encourage the, the community to pay attention of what's going on in Lansing in the next couple of um, really up to September 1st. Um, the state of Michigan approved an a, 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 um, accountability system in which they rank the schools every year based on a test score. Um, in the previous years it was MEEP and they would call this the top the bottom and the only reason why the state had this was they were trying to get federal funds um, known as race to the top funds at the time um, and they had to pass some laws and one of the things they passed was to rank a ranking system for our schools. Um, three years ago they issued their top the bottom ranking list based on the MEEP test. Um, none of our schools were in that bottom five percent um, and nor do I ever have them plan to be in that bottom 5%. But I think that the scary part or the unknown part is how the state is calculating that. Um, two years ago when we went to the M-STEP test, it was a brand new test, very different from the MEEP. Uh, kids are asked to do things uh, in a whole different way. Um, uh, think, process, and apply their knowledge. At that time, the state publicly still told all school districts since it was a new test they would not be held accountable to the, that result and nor would they be a top to bottom ranking. Um, we just recently learned that the state is planning on issuing a, a top to bottom ranking on September 1st using last year's MSTEP which was yet another version of the state assessment because last year's was adaptive. So over the last three years we've had in essence three types of tests. A MEEP, MSTEP, and an MSTEP adapt adaptive. The state has, has said that those schools which they have not published that list last year, they will be holding schools accountable to those results last year's MSTEP. What the state has said, and there was in a recent Detroit News article in Free Press, was that if there is a school that's been on that list for the last three consecutive years, they are planning to shut the school down June 30th, 2017. In, in other words, take them over. Um, again, for our district, we don't have anybody on that list. But just look down the road, um, 10 mile in East Detroit and see what they're doing there. Um, it's, it can happen anywhere. And the, the scary part is they tell you one thing, they're not going to hold you accountable. And then they come back and say, well, we are going to hold you accountable on a published list that they don't publish, but they keep in the SRO's office or the school reform office. It's pretty scary. Uh, and if anything, uh, I would encourage voters to look at the candidates on that ballot, make sure they are public school friendly from, my, from all of our perspective for our kids. Um, you know, public school is the foundation of our society. And if they're, if, if they're not, you need to ask the tough questions and see if that's the candidate that you want representing you in, in Richmond Community Schools. So uh, I will be very interested in that list that comes out on September 1st. Ironically, it comes out before Labor Day, before school starts, when all the positiveness about a new school year is beginning, um, and the state chooses to focus on a negative. And rather than helping schools, um, they're really looking at punishing them and, and taking them out of a local school district's control and becoming part of the EA. And I'll say it again, East Detroit had six schools. Four of them are now part of the state takeover. And the only two that aren't are because they don't have a state assessment. They are a K-2 building. Um, so the other four, because they administer the MEEP test, and they have made significant gains. Um, so it's not about that they are going in the wrong direction. They're going in the right direction. Um, but it's, it's an unfair playing field. So just pay attention to what's going on in Lansing, because I'm sure um, up through the election and even that lame duck session after the election is going to be very interesting. On a positive note, uh, we are starting school in a little over uh, two weeks. Um, 
It'll actually be two weeks from tomorrow. Uh, parents of our high school students should have received their letters or will be receiving them probably today or tomorrow at the latest. Um, our welcome back, we're doing things a little different. We have Blue Devil Days on August 29th, which is from 5 to 8 p.m., where students will have an opportunity to get their school pictures, photos, see their classrooms, where they're at, their lockers, etc. Um, prior to that, at 4.30, we'll be doing hosting a new families dinner to welcome all the new families to the district. So we look forward to uh, that with the administrative team at the high school. On Tuesday, August 30th, we have Blue Devil Days for the middle school. Um, those letters, I think, went out. Well, I just got mine. Oh, no, I got the high school. I got Maddie. She's no longer in middle school. I forgot. Um, <laughs> so the high school letters, I did get mine for Maddie. So uh, they'll probably receive them tomorrow. They were mail Friday, so they might have already received them or by, by the latest tomorrow. Uh, again, that will be that will be five to eight. Uh, again, they'll be have a chance to uh, see the classrooms and see their lockers, get their school pictures taken, taken, etc. Each building has a slightly different because of the age of the students, um, but we look forward to that. And they'll also have a new families dinner at 4:30 for all the middle school families that are new to our district. And then finally, um, our elementary school with our new administrative team, Mr. Koshin and Mrs. Napier. Uh, we'll be introducing families from 5 to 8 on Wednesday, August 31st um, with the new families dinner at 4.30. Again, school pictures will be taken at all the events uh, and it's going to be an exciting time. Uh, we are nearing the end of cleaning. We have a little bit more to do at the high or middle school. High school looks great. Uh, elementary school, we're getting there. We'll, we'll get it done. It will be ready to open. Um, but the new furniture has arrived, the new sound systems have been installed, the fifth graders will have lockers are there, so they'll be the first group to have the lockers in fifth grade, so a lot of good stuff that happened this summer, so exciting, exciting school year. And finally, officially school begins on Tuesday, September 6th, so thank you. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Another school year. Yeah, thank you. Next, items of interest from members of the board. Does anyone have anything? Um, Margaret, would you, sometime between now and the next uh, time that we are gathered, would you let us know specifically how many meetings Jeff has been at, present at, since January? Would you get us that information? Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> um, and then I just happen to have this forwarded to me. This is a Facebook post, kind of a lengthy Facebook post, actually. I'll read fast. Um, from a teacher that I don't know, I don't think it's a teacher from this area at all, um, but I just found the message of this particular post um, something that was a good thing to, to share. So uh, this is what he says. I was feeling pretty jaded this morning as two different sets of parents at Walmart stopped me in the school supplies aisle to complain about how much they had to get their kids this year. This is just ridiculous. I don't know how these teachers think we're supposed to get all this stuff. As they complained, they seemed to be oblivious to the fact that my cart was filled with a class set of all the supplies they were buying, which should have been a pretty clear indication that I was one of those greedy teachers they were complaining about. While I was checking out, though, things took a very different turn. I noticed the man in front of me in the checkout lane was buying school supplies for his daughter. As he went to leave, he said, you're a teacher, right? I just want to thank you for everything you do. I see your cart is filled with supplies, and I just wanted to help out as much as I can. And then he turned and handed me a $25 gift card, shook my hand, and walked away with his daughter smiling big at me. While I was extremely moved by the man's generosity, the part that stuck with me the most was the difference in the message his daughter just heard from her dad compared to the other parents who had been complaining earlier. The kids who heard their parents complaining heard this message. School is not important enough to spend money on it. Teachers are not to be trusted and have bad judgment, and learning does not require investment. The kid whose dad handed me the gift card heard, School is important enough that we should give more than required to make sure it's successful. Teachers should be respected and valued, and learning requires us to give up us giving it everything we have. If money is tight and you struggle to buy your child's school supplies, I understand. Don't worry. 
more than likely your child will have a teacher and a school that makes sure they have the supplies they need to be successful this year. However, as a parent, do your best to send the right message to your child. The man who gave me the gift card not only made my day, but I know that his daughter will enter the classroom this year with a very different perspective about her teacher and her education, and that's extremely powerful. I just felt it um, this time of year is filled with so much of that, getting lists and trying to get all that stuff. I was at a couple places today, and it brings a lot of anxiety, I know. Um, but I just thought the spin about what, what the response teaches children was really pretty, um, pretty interesting. And um, that if you don't have enough money to get those lists complete, there are lots of places where you can get that help and um, to, to make sure that we let everybody know that that help is there, too. But to think about what messages you're sending. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, public comment. A portion of our meeting that if anyone would like to address the board, they may come up. You have three minutes. There's a piece of paper up there. You can write your name and telephone number if you have a question that needs to be answered. Um, it is not a question and answer session when you come up for public comments. Is there anyone who would like to come up and speak? Jake, nothing? Hey. Nothing? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, item 11, action items. First one, 2016-17 student parent handbook. Brian, is this, there anything you want to... Uh, this was forward? presented at the last board meeting. Um, uh, we had some discussion regarding the um, the dance and the language that I sent you. I put in here. I did not hear any changes to that. Um, otherwise, um, you know, the stuff that I promised I put in the policy number is in here. Um, that's it. So all the things we talked yes. about last yes. week. Yes. Um, then a sample resolution is before us. The superintendent and approve proposed changes to the 2016-17 student parent handbook as presented in the attached documentation. Moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, 2016-17 student athlete code of conduct handbook. Again, this was presented the last time. The only change to this handbook was dates administrative uh, staffing and then um, the, the period when seniors exit and there's still time playing how we address the um, if there is a, a student who wasn't successful in a class in that eligibility and as I explained at the last morning that happened this year and we worked through it but it was absent in the policy so we wanted to make sure we were clarified on that but otherwise the, the policy the book remains the same as it was in previous years previous year I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the proposed changes to the 2016-17 Student Athletic Code of Conduct Handbook as presented in the attached documentation. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next we have the second reading of the um, bylaws and policies that we did two weeks ago and I know we have them in here as all different but if everyone is in agreement maybe a motion that would include approving you know bylaw 0140 through policy 8500 um, are there any for the second reading portion of it before we do that does anyone have any any questions or anything from the last time, Brian? No, there was all a couple of the spelling errors that we corrected. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, they should all be the same as the last one. Okay. Um, that being said, then if someone would be interested in making that motion, that includes everybody here, everything. to approve policies 0140 through 8500 as presented. 
Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, uh, motion to go into closed session for purposes of negotiations. So moved. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, we are going in and we will be back fairly shortly. Um, item BB, approval of collective bargaining agreement between Teamsters Local Union 214, representing educational paraprofessionals in Richmond Community Schools. Through uh, the negotiation process, we um, reached a tentative agreement back in June. The, the education paraprofessionals ratified the agreement over uh, the summer. Um, so um, in your packet, you'll see copies of what they ratify. There's, there's not much change. A lot of the language change was corrected on the previous negotiations. Um, so I respectfully ask that the board approve the contract. Motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the collective bargaining agreement Professionals, Teamsters, State, County, and Municipal Workers, Local 214, and Richmond Community Schools Board of Education as presented in the attached documentation. Second. It has been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Okay. Do a roll call. Uh, Kyle. Aye. Tracy. Aye. Sarah? Aye. Chris? Aye. Dan? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Brian. Next, approval of community liaison and public relations secretarial position. In the FY17 budget that was approved in June, uh, this position was eliminated. And at that last meeting, there was discussion about the position based on the final audit that took place that evening. Um, I uh, mentioned to the board that I would bring this back in August. Um, in your backup, we had a couple with some of the resignations that we had um, and the new hires that we have based on the years of experience. Um, we do have a savings in the district, and there's enough for the savings that would uh, put this position back, plus still some to the district as savings. So I would request that we put the position uh, back um, as it was last year. It's a part time position, uh, 29 hours a week. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the position of community liaison and public relations secretary as presented in the attached documentation. Okay, it has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Do a roll call. Dan? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Chris? Aye. Tracy? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Next, adopt the publicly funded health ins insurance contribution act statutory hard cap. Um, I placed a revised copy. It's got red ink on the front because I had a uh, correction on the uh, percentage. But um, basically, Public Act 152 requires districts to either be a hard cap district or 80-20 district. This publicly acknowledges that we are a hard cap district. All of our employees. Um, as a district, we are hard cap. Um, some existing contracts agree to still pay 20% of the premium, which is puts them under the hard cap. Um, but we are a hard cap district, so this just recognizes uh, to the community and everybody that we are a hard cap district. I've also placed in, in your backup the actual PH 152 Act um, that defines um, that went into place in 2011. Motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and adapt, adopt the statutory hard cap as set forth under Section 3 of the Publicly Funded Health Insurance Contribution Act for all district employees as presented in the attached documentation. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call. Chris? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Dan? Aye. Tracy? Aye. Sarah? And I vote aye. Motion carries. Okay. That concludes our business. We are adjourned at 750. <laughs>